Okay, people, let's be professional here. The driver accelerates 240 gram, kilogram, sorry, snowmobile, which results in a force being exerted that speeds up the snowmobile from 6 to 28 over a time interval of 60 seconds. Sketch the event. Well, first of all, you have to sketch a snowmobile. Okay? You have to sketch a snowmobile. Logan, sketch the snowmobile. Here's your track. Okay. It's got the uh, handlebars. It's got a windshield. And it's got a headlight. And then it has a ski right there. Okay. Give the guy a helmet. There you go. What is the snowmobile's change in momentum? Your change in momentum, look on the board, mass times what? Change in velocity. You cannot change the mass, therefore you change the velocity. So your change in momentum is what? <clears throat> your mass, 240 kilograms, times your change in velocity, so you subtract 28.0 minus 6.00 meters per second. Change in momentum is what? 240 times 28 minus 6. Okay, what'd you guys get for that? Twenty two times two forty. Five thousand two hundred and eighty. Be careful of the units here. Kilogram meters per second. These are not Newtons. Do not write Newtons. Okay. Remember, what was a Newton? A kilogram meters per second squared. This is kilogram meters per second. See the difference? All right. There's your change in momentum. Well, what is the impulse, guys? Well, guys, force times change in time is impulse, and that's the same thing as your change in momentum. So an impulse is exactly what the change in momentum is. So that's the same thing, 5,280 kilogram meters per second, right? And then C, what is the magnitude of the average force that is exerted on the snowmobile? It's the change in time. Times what? Force. Impulse is force times change in time. What is it equal to? Change in momentum. Impulse, since we just said impulse is force times change in time, and it's equal to 5,280, since we have a change in time of 60 seconds, how do we find the force? Impulse divided by change in time is your, is your force, your average force. Okay, so now <clears throat> 5,280 kilogram meters per second divided by 60 seconds is your average force. Okay, so what do you have? 88 Newtons, right? Okay, so 88 Newtons. 88 Newtons. See how the units work out, Mr. Ryan? So you have seconds over seconds. So you end up with kilogram meters per second squared, which is the same thing as a Newton, right? You don't see that? You have 60 seconds on the bottom. You have kilogram meters per seconds on top. And you divide one over seconds by seconds, you'll end up with seconds squared. And a kilogram meters per second is the same thing as a Newton. You don't believe me. Okay, Ryan, here we go. Impulse is Newton seconds. Kilogram meters per second. A Newton is a kilogram meters per second squared times a second is the same thing as a kilogram meters per second because that will cancel that. Good job. That is good. No, I'm glad you wanted me to go through that. Unlike some people who are impatient and don't want to see it, but then when they get the quiz, they don't do it right. 
So that's why the people that want to see like the details have 90s and 100s, and the people that have no patience for it don't. Okay, now we're going to do a challenge problem. Is you ready? Okay, let's do the challenge problem. S clear? Yes, sir. We are going to do a challenge problem. And for all the folks at home listening on the YouTubes, we're going to do a challenge problem. Buddy, that would be a great idea if we had a podcast. And also, I like your suggestions of repeating the questions so that the folks at home can hear. I will do that. I agree. I can't. My I can't do it right the second though because I don't have the um <clears throat> the camera to do it. All right, I'm going to copy and paste this. Cut. Uh, it sounds like a great one. I'll tell you what, we'll do it tomorrow when we do our project. Copy. Boom. All right, here we go. The challenge problem. Okay. Suppose a 60.0 kilogram person was in a vehicle that hit the concrete wall. An example problem one. I'll give you the information for that once we do the drawing. So I want you to do a drawing of a car smashing into a wall. Okay. Um, either way you want, Ariana, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go to the right. So here we go. The car. There's your car. And it's going to smash into this wall. And it's going to be all smashed and crumpled up. Okay. Boom. Boom. Now it is smashed. Okay. Going this way. All right. I'll give you all the necessary info. The mass of the person is 60.0 kilograms. But you also have to account for the mass of the car. So the mass of the car is 2,200 kilograms. <clears throat> the initial velocity of the car is 26 centimeters per second. And of course, when it smashes, what's the final velocity? Zero, zero meters per second. Okay, mass of the car is 2200. All right, now it says, what's the average force exerted on the person? And B, some people think they can stop their body. Well, let's, here we go. The velocity of the person equals the, that of the car before and after the crash. The velocity changes in 0.2 seconds. So as it's hitting the wall and as the crumple zone crumples, the change in time that happens is 0 0.20 seconds. Yeah. Okay. The change in momentum here is that an impulse. What is the relationship between impulse and change in momentum? What is the equation we just learned? No, that's a uh, elastic collision here. We need we're talking about impulse. What is impulse? What's the definition? Force times your change in time equals your change in momentum. Well, what is how do you change momentum? Mass times your change in velocity. Well, we have everything we need here. Okay? We want to know the amount of force exerted on the person. Change in time, 0 0.20 seconds. How much mass do we have here? Correct. That's exactly right. We have to add them both together because the mass of the person is 60. The mass of the car is 2,200 kilograms. So what's the total mass? 2,260 kilograms. Okay. <clears throat> My change in velocity? 26. Okay. So it's your final minus your initial. It's negative 26 meters per second. Find the force on the person. It's a lot of Newtons. So multiply and divide. We get 293,800 Newtons. Why is that so much? Well, because you're in the car. You and the car 
you know, you're, you're part of the car. You're being pushed on by the back seat. So the back seat is pushing on you. Plus you have the momentum of you, your body, right? Well, let's see in that instant, how much would that person weigh? So we solved A. The question B says, some people think they can stop their bodies from lurching forward in a vehicle that is suddenly by breaking and putting their hands out on the dashboard. Well, they don't think that. That's just that's just instinctive behavior. Find the mass of the object that has a weight of equal to the force you must calculate it. Can you lift such a mass? Are you strong enough to stop your body with your arm? So the question is, Greeny, what kind of push-ups would we be doing right there? Well, how do we find that? Well, now that's the force of your weight. That's mass times gravity. Calculate your mass. Divide that by gravity. Calculate the kilograms that would already uh, all that that would feel like. So that would be the apparent mass of twenty nine thousand uh, nine hundred and seventy nine kilograms. Now, if you want to convert newtons to pounds, it'd be two hundred ninety three thousand eight hundred newtons. And it's approximately one pound per 4.448 newtons, which would be about 66,000 pounds. Can you push up bench press 66,000 pounds? Okay. So when you're in the car and you smash into the wall from 26 meters per second into the wall, then you do like this, you do a 66,000 pound bench press. Well, it's a known conversion that one pound is 4.448 newtons. Okay. So, no, you would need a airbag. What is the value of the airbag? What does it change? It doesn't change the mass. It doesn't change the velocity of the car. It changes, somebody said, stopping time. Yes. So, it changes this. The airbag increases the stopping time. And I'll tell you what, if you just do... Logan, if you change that to one second, okay, Ross Spencer, if you change this stopping time to one second instead of 0.2, it's a significantly less force. Well, look at this, Greeny. 2260 times 0.26. 2260 times 0.26 would be 587 newtons, okay? So if you divide that by 4.448, that would be 132 pounds. Could you bench press 132 pounds? Yes. So if the airbag increases the stopping time by not even a second, it massively reduces the amount of force on your body. Just one second. Mm -hmm. So we had two seconds, right? That would be nothing if we had two So you see that? The crumple zone, the crumple zone compared with the and the airbag together would would increase this time to like 0.9 or 0.8. And that would significantly, oh man, it would drop this force by like 100,000 or 200,000 and allow you to live. So then instead of doing a 66,000 pound push up, you're doing like a 150 or 200 pound push up. Okay. And you know those crash test dummies that the car company uses, the crash test dummies? I don't actually use those anymore. They use computers. But the crash test dummies you saw in the video from back in the 90s, they had force sensors in their head. Okay? All right. Good job, people.